Anyone under order? Good evening and welcome to tonight's regularly scheduled January board meeting of the West Davy Hills Board of Education. Our first order of business is to approve the agenda, which is displayed on the screen. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Our next order of business is to approve the minutes of the January 16th meeting that have been distributed. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. And second? Second. Any discussion or corrections to the minutes? No? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion <coughs> carries. All right, I'll now turn the meeting over to Dr. Mason to present the recognitions. We have a number of significant student and faculty and staff recognitions today that we're happy to celebrate. So uh, to begin, we have a group of National Board Certified Teachers that we're going to recognize, and I'd like to ask uh, Jane Marie Marlin to uh, let everybody know what that means and then recognize these individuals. Well, National Board Certification is a voluntary advanced teaching credential <coughs> in which the National Board sets standards of teaching excellence um, they outline what teachers, accomplished teachers, should know and be able to do. And I'm proud to say that we currently have 70 National Board teachers currently in West Davie Hill City Schools. The certification process includes teachers analyzing student work, videotaping their teaching, and candidates showing their proficiency through assessments. They spend a lot of time reflecting on their craft and learning how to improve the teaching and learning in their classrooms. A few weeks ago, we found out that five of our teachers in our district were awarded National Board Certification for this year. And so we have four of those candidates tonight, and we'd like to recognize them. So I will call their name, and they can each stand up. Um, from uh, Roger Bettinger is not here with us tonight, but he is a teacher at Vestavia Hills High School. We also have Katie Grace from Vestavia Hills Elementary, Cahaba Heights. <laughs> Jessica Sutherland from the Stavey Hills High School. And Susan Zana also from the Stavey Hills High School. We are so proud to add these individuals to our list of accomplished teachers in the Stavey Hills. Congratulations, teachers. That's a grueling process. <laughs> and, uh, uh, congratulations to you for taking on the challenge and being successful. That's a great thing. Uh, next, we have still another member of our fine arts faculty in the school system being recognized. That seems to be kind of a habit here lately at board meetings. That's a, that's a habit not to break. So, uh, Merlin, you want to share that with us? I have the honor tonight of honoring um, Kim Bain, who is our band director at Pazitz Middle School. Um, she was awarded the Lacey Powell Outstanding Music Educator Award, and this includes all, all the music types you can think of, jazz, symphonic, um, orchestra bands, all that, anything to do with music, basically, um, Kim re represents us in this award. A couple of things I'd like to say about Kim, and <laughs> but you know, when you get an award like this, Kim, you have to have a couple of things said about you. Um, <laughs> I constantly, she is so great, and I bet many of you have had your children with Kim, or you may have even had Kim. Um, not only is she dedicated to the, the music part of our students, but she is very much de de dedicated to the academic side of music with children, if that makes any sense. It's not just, let's teach these kids how to play. It's teach these kids how to play for a lifetime, and maybe, maybe find their future in that. Um, I, I truly get calls to recruit her. So whenever my secretary say, um, somebody wants to talk to Kim Bain, I try to steal the phone because um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want that happening. And one of the coolest things about Pazitz, uh, I don't know if Kim wrote it, you'll have to give me the history, but you have a song that's dedicated to David Miles. Yeah. And they, they play that often. David was a principal at Pazitz for 20 years, and so you know it's my mission that I get my song worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I, keep, I keep waiting on that. And, um, this, is, this is what a conscientious teacher she is. Um, 
one day and you know I'm telling on myself so Dr. Mason if you want to see me afterwards that's okay but um, we left the van the tornado drill in, the, in their storage room a little bit longer than they should have been because <laughs> <laughs> Came and she was sweating, and she was like, "Don't ever do that to me." I lost my chance. I lost my chance at the song. She's really, <laughs> she's really the best of the best. I don't know if um, I, I watch her work magic daily. I mean, you watch teachers progressively work with kids. She daily changes the lives of children, and um, I just can't say enough about her. This is this is an amazing award, Kim. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I have uh, Meredith. Don't feel bad. I'm still waiting on my song. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess you have to be there longer than eight months to get it. I am excited uh, about recognizing a, a group of students from the St. Louis High School as well as one of our faculty members. Uh, I want to preface it with, um, and, and why don't y'all go, go ahead and come on up, students, and line the front. So everybody wants to see you. So we, we, that's why we ask you here, so we can see your pretty faces. And, and learn more about you. But as they're coming up, uh, this group of students went to Trumbauer Festival, which is our state uh, theater competition in the state of Alabama. It was in Florence, Alabama this year, and they traveled up there. It was the first weekend of December, I believe, uh, very early in December. And they, they really experienced some tremendous success. Uh, and I want to bring up uh, Miss Jamie Stevenson, too, because I'm going to talk about her in a minute. Um, but I, we wanted the opportunity. Yeah, that's right. the opportunity to just share a little bit about this group and, and their accomplishments with you but they um I'm, I, we would be here all night if i read the entire list of things that they won in this um at this competition but um, two great things did, did come out of this i wanted to highlight for you because these are a little bit easier to highlight and these students were a part of this and i, I do want to read your names and um i know a couple of you might not be here from this list but i want to read everybody that was involved but i, I wanted to really do just use our our show that we took it was almost maine uh, we did perform it for our school um, and our community in the fall. And then they took the show to Trumbauer and just had tremendous success with it. Apparently just knocked it out of the park with their performance. And we walked away from, from that alone with an all-star cast. Uh, three of our members um, were in the all-star cast. Gracie Phillips, uh, Dina Kasman, and Maya Bearfield uh, were all-star cast members. And we had best actor Ryan Bowles. Um, and the show itself uh, won best in show at Trumbauer. So we're very excited about Almost Maine. And it was, it was a wonderful it really was. Um, but uh, the, uh, our owner read you. Step forward as I call your name so everybody can see who you are. But Lydia Johnson, uh, Ryan Bowles, Diane Snotty, Kirk Kirkpatrick, Maya Bearfield, Alyssa Buckwald, Dina Kasman, Gracie Phillips, Kyla Van Norman, Sadie Sue Long, and Lily Birchfield. Um, and we are just so proud of, of these students. And, and there were other students that went and received some other individual awards and things that they did through Trump Hour, but um, we really, really are so proud of these students. We want them to keep, keep competing and continue taking classes in, in theater. So with that, I wanted to also take the opportunity to highlight Ms. Jamie Stevenson. Uh, we are only a few months into her time with us at Sandy Hills, and we're already seeing um, or, or reaping the, the benefits of her being a part of our faculty and working with our students. She at Trump Bauer was also named the Theater Teacher of the Year for the state of Alabama, uh, which is a wonderful distinction and, and very uh, and a great honor. Um, and you know, Ms. Stevenson, if you wouldn't mind sharing, who who selects you for that award? Um, all the theater teachers in the state vote. Um, they nominate and then they vote on who they want to to represent them as the Teacher of the Year. So truly, it's from her peers and the work that she's done in the state of Alabama before she came to the state, and then also what we've done here. In a short time at the same field. So, truly an honor for her and for our students from the same field. So, congratulations and thank you. Who wants to plug the show for the spring? Somebody want to share with everybody do what we're doing? All right. Okay, <laughs> we are doing Into the Woods. It's going to be April 26th through 28th. 26th through 28th. Um, a lot of these people, amazing actors, amazing singers, are going to be in it. Uh, and highly suggest that you all attend and it's something that we are super excited to showcase a lot of hard work is going into it and we'll be going into it uh, as we continue to go along with it so 
hopefully we'll see you all there. Three evening shows and a matinee on Saturday, is that right? All right, so four opportunities to see these young folks perform. So thank you. Great job, guys. Thank you. Congratulations to these students and their teachers. Um, as a former high school principal, I always thought I'd have the perfect high school if every single child in that school had something beyond their regular classes that they were passionate about, they could be involved in and, and learn through. And certainly the arts or the way that happens for an awful lot of kids. And thank you all for not just providing the opportunity, but providing it at such an excellent level. So congratulations. Thank you. Um, I'd like to move the uh, like item nine up to recognitions because uh, we do have a group of people that are here that we're very proud of that we want to recognize and they might like to go on home so we're going to move that one up and we'll do that now. So uh, recently we had the annual state bus inspection. Obviously one of our biggest commitments in the school system is for our students to be safe wherever they are. And that includes when they're on buses going on field trips or overnight trips or whatever. So that's a very important thing for us to know that our buses are being maintained in a safe way. So for the um, 13th year in a row, no deficiencies were found on Vestavia's school buses by the state. We received a very nice letter from the uh, State Department acknowledging that and acknowledging what a great accomplishment that was. So uh, that doesn't happen by accident, and I just wanted to take a minute to recognize the people who have made that happen. So if I call your name, would you please stand up and then we'll recognize all of you. Uh, our bus mechanic, who makes sure everything's in good shape day in and day out, is Michael Barner. We have several of our drivers with us tonight. We're really glad for that. So when I call your name, if you would stand up, please. Uh, Steve Brennan, Jeanette Howard, Jeff McGee, Alicia Thomas, Terry Wright, Robert Walden, and Alan Zuniga. So thank you all for being here also. I also want to thank and recognize Tim Loveless, our Director of Administrative Services. This falls under his bulging portfolio. <laughs> the different things that he does and I appreciate his leadership too. So just thanks to all of you for providing our students a safe way to get to where they need to be day in and day out. And thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you. If you, if you need to go rest up, you can <laughs> Next is our monthly financial statements. Mr. Mayne would be delighted to uh, brief, make brief remarks and we'll entertain any questions that you might have. Very brief remarks. Uh, <laughs> information presented in your packet is from the month of December. <coughs> Local revenues were 32% budget. Uh, last year at this time, they were only 25% budget. I'd like to also go, out and go ahead and point out, right now we have local revenue budgeted at $35.5 million. As of yesterday, just slightly over $24 million of that had already come in for this year. So. Collections have been strong and coming in timely now. On expenditures, currently we're at 26% of budget. Ideally, it would be 25%, but there are some items we pay in the first quarter of the year that kind of skew the way uh, the money flows during the year. Last year, we were on 25% budget, uh, and all board bank accounts have been reconciled at this time. Oh, uh, one other thing. Uh, speaking with the auditors, they feel they are on the track to be able to present the audit report at the Federal Report. Recommend uh, approval of the financial statement as presented by Mr. Mayor. Um, you have heard the superintendent's recommendation that the board approve the financial statements for December 2017. Do I hear a motion to approve? Second. And second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Number of consent items on the agenda. Most of these are out of state overnight trips for extracurricular activities. And then there's some disposal of property from Liberty Park Middle School of obsolete property. So I recommend uh, approval of these consent items. 
Yeah. You approve the superintendent's recommendation to the board to approve the out of state and overnight trips and property disposal as submitted. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. We have a change order to propose to the board, and I'd like to ask Brenda uh, Bell from APM to share with you the, the history of that. Come on, come on up. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So the bulk of this change order request is at west, right next to us. Uh, if you look on this hillside, uh, you'll see a very steep slope to this hillside. When the contractor got into the foundation systems for this project, um, we discovered the as-built drawings and the depths of the rock that we thought and it was assumed were on this hillside were different than expected. So what's happened is the design team has added and revised the foundation system along this hillside to both uh, match what's there existing and also support the existing building that's there. It's a short version of it. So we've added micropiles on that hillside to support uh, both the existing building and also what's going to be there. Um, so this has totally changed the foundation system for that hillside altogether, which is additional cost. Um, the unfortunate parts, it's also additional time because the contractor had to start, had to stop when they found this, um, had to redesign the foundation system, get it priced, get it approved before they proceeded with this work. So part of this uh, change order request and change order is to add additional time to the contract. Um, the original contract time was July 15th. This will now push the completion date back to September 1st with the addition of this time. It's about a 48 calendar day delay due to redesign of this foundation of this hillside. Um, already discussed this with, with Kim, with Amanda. They're aware of this. Uh, the positive in this is you do have an existing kitchen cafeteria that you can use until this time. The negative is, of course, it's not ready for the start of school, but having this hillside adequately supported and supporting the existing foundation obviously is more important. So that's the bulk of this change order and what's included in that. <clears throat> Any questions on that? If we turn up Mr. Meat, see if Tim has an all about just want to keep delaying your As long as we finish this faster than we finish the high school parking lot edition of the I recommend approval of the, the change order as presented. You heard the superintendent's recommendation of the board approve the change order number one with white GC as submitted. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. And second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Twice a year, the state requires that school systems update their budgets by making budget amendments to reflect any changes in expected revenues or expenditures. So the budget amendment that is in front of you is for the required January budget amendment. And as you can see from the summary, we had uh, some significant increases in ad valorem taxes and some uh, transfers into schools to cover bus costs. And then also we had some significant expenditures primarily in the area of technology to uh, increase our bandwidth and to replace some obsolete routers and servers. And if you want to know more about it than that, you're going to need to ask Ms. Garfinkel. <laughs> uh, but uh, as you can see, the, the balance between the additional revenues and the additional expenditures is almost exactly the same. The net result is a, a $11,700 increase uh, in, the, uh, in revenues over expenditures. I do recommend it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you have heard the superintendent's recommendation and the board approved the budget amendment as submitted. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any discussion? Um, do we increase the bandwidth on the internet? And is it, do we share it across the system or is it out of a single, or does each school have their own connection on the internet? Uh, they each have their own. So okay. They up to all of them. Up to all of them. Where are we at? Uh, 500 dollars for 750. Is that good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
it, it'll the more Chromebooks we purchase, yeah. the more it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, bandwidth is always an escalating thing. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion here. The next item is to get the board's approval to use Sanford University for graduation exercises. This is a formality. You've seen this in earlier instances where the person or the entity that we're leasing space from wants official board approval for that. So that's what this is about. And Tyler really needs you to approve this, to approve the site for graduation. Yeah. 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 Please. <laughs> 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 Thank you. All right, you have heard the recommendation of the board approve the use of Sanford University for this year's graduation. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. And second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You can have graduation now. Mm -hmm. Dr. Burgess, sure. is there going to be a rain plan? Sure. <laughs> 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 how, we can, how we can get the uh, family members in. The next item on the agenda is a proposed revision of our policy on harassment, violence, and threats of violence prohibited. Uh, let me just make some comments about why we're looking at this and looking at revising it. Uh, back to the theme that our first responsibility is to keep our students safe at school. Uh, safety is physical safety, obviously, but it's also emotional safety. And one of the things that can undermine that for our students is when actions are taken toward them that make them feel unsafe emotional. It gets in the way of their learning. Uh, it can affect their image of themselves. It's just something that uh, is just not acceptable, and we want to be sure that everybody understands that it's not acceptable. So a, a policy really has two purposes. One, to state very clearly what our expectations are for student behavior, and then secondly, to serve the basis for action that those expectations are not made. So that's why we're taking a look at this policy, and the main thing we're looking to do is to be absolutely clear that there is no excuse for harassment or bullying, regardless of what the stated basis for it is. The policy as it is worded now, and I'm sure this is unintentional, basically says, as long as you don't do one of the things that's on this short list, have at it. Well, that's not the message that we want to send. So uh, we're looking at updating the short list, but also making it very clear that those things are just either legal requirements or messages that we want to send that don't do these things. Uh, but then we also have strong language in that it says, if you're an eighth grader and you think up some new way to harass somebody that's not on the list, that's unacceptable. We're going to deal with it. So uh, that's where we're headed with this. I realize today, and I accept uh, responsibility for this, we have some language in the policy as it exists that we did not get out of the draft that I gave you that is not consistent with what I just said we're trying to accomplish. So rather than try to change it on the fly today, I'd just like to ask you to table that. We'll get that cleaned up and bring it to you at the, at the next meeting. But that's what our intention is, is to be clear about what our expectations uh, in, this, in this important area. All right, you've heard the superintendent's recommendation at the board table, the discussion on the revised policy 6.24. Do I hear a motion to approve that? So moved. And second? Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion. All right, now um, we're ready to talk about the superintendent appointment. <clears throat> I'd like to start by reviewing the search process um, again. We began our search process back in the fall by hiring AASB to conduct the search for us. Dr. Terry Jenkins was our lead consultant who held meetings and focus groups to help us determine the selection criteria. Additionally, there was an online survey that was enormously successful and gave us a lot of good feedback on what the community wanted in their next superintendent. The search was then launched on a nationwide basis, and over the next month, work was done to seek out and recruit qualified candidates. 32 applications were received from 15 different states. They were reviewed by AASB, 
and the top four finalists were presented to us by Dr. Jenkins at our December 13th board meeting. Interview dates were then arranged, and each visit included a tour of our facilities, meeting with teachers, central office staff, as well as students. Then a reception was held for members of the public to meet each candidate before the public interview was held. These public interviews were recorded and posted on our website the day after the last interview. So at this point, um, we held a call meeting on January 16th and voted to name the candidates we wanted to know more about. And the result of that was Dr. Todd Freeman and Dr. Patrick Martin. We then arranged site visits as follows. On January 22nd, David Powell, Lisa Baker, and Tyler Burgess traveled to Washington, Illinois, and visited the District 50 school system, um, which was um, Dr. Martin's previous um, system. Um, on the 22nd and the 23rd, they met with um, individuals who represented the community, the board, other superintendents, principals, teachers, and parents. On January 23rd, Steve Bendall, Kim Hauser, and I visited the City of Gardendale Board of Education offices and interviewed their board president, the Education Advisory Board, the City Council, and the Central Office staff, and community leaders. <clears throat> On January 25th, David Powell, Lisa Baker, and Ty Arendahl went to Sylacauga to meet with board members, the State Superintendent, the Chief of Police, community leaders, teachers, and principals, and the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce. On January 25th, also, Steve Bendall, Tanya Roselle, and I went to Auburn City Schools Central Offices. We interviewed members of the Central Office staff, various teachers, principals, and community leaders, as well as the superintendent and board members. Over the past two weeks, Jerry Dent contacted the candidates' references the general counsel at AASB, and other professionals in Illinois and Alabama to further vet the candidates. We all took notes in these interviews, compiled them, and distributed them to the board members. On this past Monday and Tuesday, Dr. Morton and Dr. Freeman came to our central offices again for a final meeting with each board member. These meetings were between the candidate and a board member individually or in groups of two. Earlier today at 4 p.m., the board held a work session to discuss the results of our search. And I'd like to say that we had two extremely qualified candidates and this made our decision very difficult. But at this point, I feel we are ready to vote on our selection for superintendent. So, do I hear a motion to nominate a candidate? I'd like to move that we select Dr. Todd Freeman as the next superintendent. All right, we have a motion on the floor to name Dr. Todd Freeman as our next superintendent. Do I hear a second? Second. All right, discussion. Um, the, uh, when we looked at you know both candidates, we went and saw both and went to both schools and both walked away and said, man, these guys are both great and have done an awesome job. So then it really, the hard work is to kind of drill down and say, okay, they're both great guys, they both have great track records, what is it that our school needs and which one is the best fit for what our school needs? And as we begin to look at all the things that we have in flight here, um, from redistricting, from the construction projects, from starting a ninth grade campus, to um, bringing a new K-5 school online, there's a whole lot of moving parts and all that that go, um, to go along with that. So the planning for the future and all that uh, began to kind of rest on experience, who's been in that role and who's done those things. And Dr. Friedman has been both a uh, principal, he had seven, op seven years in the central office where he uh, worked on construction projects and redistricting and things of that nature. And then since then he's been a superintendent. And one of the things when we did our site visit that um, me and Dr. Arendal and Dr. Baker commented is that he had assembled a very impressive staff and um, I actually told him this week that his staff is probably the best thing on his resume is that who he has developed and how those people operate he should be very proud of and speaks very well to him. So based on those reasons um, that's why I would support Dr. Freeman in this role. 
So you're the only person in the room without a doctorate. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm the first male in four generations not to be Dr. Power. <laughs> 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 so I'd like to thank, we talked about this in more detail in the work session before this meeting. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Mason, Dr. Jenkins, as well as Susan Salter for designing and pushing us to, to go through a very extensive process. As you've heard, we've visited all these places, we've talked to people on the phone, we've received much solicited and unsolicited counsel on each of these people, uh, some positive and some negative. And as I said earlier, I think that both of these candidates have just wonderful qualifications in so many ways. And it was a very, very difficult process. Uh, while I talked to everyone, I think the comments earlier and, and hopefully in the next few minutes will illustrate to you all that it was one that we went through with a, a lot of pain and commitment and, and suffering uh, because it was so close. And so uh, I fully support Dr. Freeman, uh, Dr. Martin, excellent individual. I'm sure he was going to move on or he will move on to great things. But Dr. Freeman does have the skill set uh, within the last, well, within his recent memory of the task that we're facing, which as Dr. Mason would tell you, are many multiple fronts right now. And that's not typical to have all these things in front of you right now. So it's important that we have someone who has experience. And that's <coughs> the primary reason that I support Dr. Freeman. I echo what David and Jerry have said um, as far as character, both gentlemen, outstanding character. Um, you know, anybody's going to be lucky to have either one of them, in my opinion. With uh, Dr. Freeman, one thing that stands out to me, and I mentioned it in the work session, is, is he's, a, he's a consensus builder, a team builder. He, he really reaches out to his administration, his principals, his teachers, and seeks their input. And uh, talking to them and listening to them when you've got people telling you who have worked for him in the past that said that they follow him in the New York Minute, the man walks in excellence, uh, I cried when he left, uh, that just says a lot to me for the people who have to work day in and day out with them, whether it's in the central office or, or in the schools themselves. Um, something that stood out to me with Dr. Freeman also is he mentioned or discussed about taking Best Amy to the next level. We're very blessed and very fortunate with all of your hard work that we're at a level that a lot of people aspire to be. And having a child in the system myself, I want not only what we have, but what's better. And I feel that he, he has the teamwork and the, the capabilities and the experience to, to take Vestavia to that next level for, for our kids and all of you. Decision. Sure was. All right, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? The motion carries. All right, thank you, board members. I will now entertain a motion to authorize Jerry Dent and um, myself to work with Mr. Boone to negotiate a contract and a start date for Dr. Franklin Dua. Um, here's such a motion. So moved. And a second? <coughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Chairman, if I could have a point of privilege to make a couple of comments. Yes. I appreciate please. that. Please <laughs> First of all, I, um, <coughs> Ms. Corona has outlined the process and more used in the selection process, and I think just hearing that, it sounds pretty extensive, and it is. Uh, and I'm, I think I'm probably the only person other than these five who understand just the commitment that it took on their part over these last uh, several weeks. And it's been incredible. Um, I, I said, I feel confident we're gonna get a superintendent out of this process and we may get five unemployed board members before it's over <laughs> because they've been away from their families, they've been away from their jobs, uh, they've given this their, their full attention and their full commitment. And if you were in the work session this afternoon, I think you know how seriously they took it and how, how uh, hard they um, um, wrestled with themselves to be sure they were making the right decision. So just on behalf of the community, I want to thank you all and just uh, just uh, be sure everybody understands just uh, what, a, what a great job I think they did and what commitment they, they had to this process. 
And then second, I'd just say I look forward to working with Dr. Freeman. I did not know Dr. Freeman or Dr. Martin when this process started. And I consider it a pleasure to have gotten to know both of them over the past uh, several months, spent several hours with each of them. And I agree, they were both great candidates. When I started asking around who are the up and coming superintendents in Alabama, these were the two names I got over and over and over. So I wasn't surprised that they rose to the top uh, through this process. Uh, I have absolute confidence in Dr. Freeman. Uh, I think he will prove to be a very strong leader for this school system. I think he'll provide calm, thoughtful leadership. Uh, he will initiate and lead change, but he'll do so in a way that invites participation and input from all stakeholders in the community. And I think that in a community like this, that's what's called for, is, uh, is that kind of thoughtful but inclusive leadership. Um, so uh, I know, again, from reading notes of the site visits, one of the strengths is his ability to form positive relationships with all stakeholders. And those, uh, positive, uh, those relationships, as I read it, you know more about it than I did because you were there, uh, they're not superficial. They're deep and they're lasting and they get you through tough times. So I could be, I could not uh, be more pleased to uh, start the process of working with him to make this transition as smooth as possible. And I'll do everything I can in the next 30 days or 300 days or however long it is uh, to support him and work with him. And I have uh, nothing but great expectations for his success. Personnel. I have a number of personnel recommendations that I would ask the board to approve. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation that the board approve the personnel actions as submitted. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. And second? Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Our last order of business will be to invite public comment. We ask that you please um, come to the podium and state your name and your address and limit your comments to agenda items and to three minutes if possible. Have any comments? All right, there being no further business to come before this board, we stand adjourned. <coughs>